The 1970s were years of great change in New Zealand society, and this Cambridge woman was one of the revolutionaries. Linda Jones took on the New Zealand Racing Conference, one of the last bastions of male domination, and helped win the right for women to be licensed as jockeys, just like the men. Having won that battle for equality, Linda quickly established herself as a rider of outstanding skill, a jockey with a winning edge who would chalk up historic race victories on both sides of the Tasman. Linda had been involved with horses since childhood, and by 1970, her only access to racing was the powder puff derbies, ladies only events with no betting. By 1975, the Rotorua Club was actively supporting women riders by hosting an international race. Linda showed she was the best in the country. Had earned an invitation to a world championship in Brazil. Linda found that New Zealand and Australia were the only countries that didn't allow women to compete against the men. That provided the motivation to challenge the racing establishment's stand on women jockeys. The first application in 1976 was rejected, and on appeal, Linda was told that she was too old, married, and not strong enough. At the time, Linda was 24. Public, political, and media pressure mounted, and in 1977, the racing conference finally agreed to license women riders. It was an enormous victory. Yet ironically for the trailblazer, Linda wouldn't have the honor of being the first woman to compete against men in a betting race. She was pregnant at the time of the vote, so it was visiting Canadian jockey Joan Phipps who led the field home in an historic race at Te Awamutu in November. Linda's first races against men came at Matamata in August of 1978. She came to second and a third from five rides. A week later, Linda's incredible sequence of historic firsts started at Tarapa. Big Bickies was her first race win, and the first by a woman jockey in the North Island. The wins continued to roll in over the following weeks as trainers realized Linda had a special empathy with horses, that she could get them to achieve what no other jockey could. In October, she was back at Tarapa for another historic occasion, four winners in a day, the first by a woman in Australasia. By Christmas, Linda had 36 wins and was second to Bob Vance on the Premiership. She had recorded more firsts along the way, becoming the first woman to win an open handicap and the first to win at Ellerslie. The Wellington Racing Carnival was the next target. Linda's celebrity status was growing and huge crowds flocked to the track to cheer her on. The biggest win of her life came in the Wellington Derby. It was only post-race that Linda understood the significance of that win. Guiding Holy Toledo home made her the first woman in Australasia, Britain, Europe or North America to ride a derby winner. The harsh reality of racing struck on the last day of the carnival when Linda crashed heavily during the New Zealand Oaks. The injuries were severe and sidelined her for 10 weeks. Australia had been watching Linda's achievements with great admiration and when fit again, they invited her over for a seven week visit that turned into an outstanding success. The Premier of New South Wales was present when she became the first woman to ride against men at a major Australian race meeting. That was the Mannion Cup at Rose Hill in March 1979. Linda then went north to Queensland and more history. She became the first woman to ride a winner against male professionals in a registered meeting in Australia, piloting Pay the Purple to a win at the Labor Day Cup at Doombin. It was a new experience for the racing industry and the Australians embraced the PR potential, which helped attract thousands to the tracks. Linda continued to repay their faith. A week later, she rode Northfleet to victory in the West End Stakes, one of South Australia's top three races. Given the state rivalries, Victoria didn't want to miss out either, so Linda became the first woman to ride at Flemington, an occasion marked with more fanfare. By now, commercial sponsors were on board as well, and the trip was extended to take in South Africa. Despite missing a big part of the New Zealand season, Linda finished 10th on the Premiership with 49 wins. She was leading first season apprentice and leading apprentice in stakes earnings. That magnificent first season earned the admiration of the writers with their Racing Personality of the Year Award. 
a more formal public honour was bestowed with the awarding of an MBE, the first woman to receive the award for her contribution to the racing industry. But, like a shooting star, Linda's career was over before we knew it. An accident on the training track aggravated previous injuries, and she was forced to retire from race day riding in the second season. Race fans can only wonder how much greater her tally of 77 wins might have been, but her unique record of firsts collected in that trailblazing year of riding is something that will never be beaten. Fortunately, Linda wasn't lost to racing. She appeared in special races while working with her husband Alan on their breeding and training operation at Cambridge. And now Linda adds another first to her racing credentials by becoming the first woman inducted into the New Zealand Racing Hall of Fame.